Welcome to the final episode of my series 10 years in China. If you have been watching some of my recent videos, you know that I have been in China for 10 years and that I wanted to make a series to share some of my thoughts and opinions about a decade here in China. In this video, I will talk about how China has changed in the last 10 years. I have seen a lot of changes and here are 10 of the biggest ones I have noticed. I will talk about 5 national level changes and 5 everyday changes. Let's start with number 10. I am not big into tech, but I can't help but notice how Chinese tech companies are shaping the world. In 2010, not many people paid attention to Chinese tech companies, but now it is impossible to ignore them. If you are in the travel or photography space, you have definitely heard of GJI. GJI is the leading drone company in the world, and if you own a drone, it is probably a GJI. This Chinese company was founded in 2006 and now dominates the drone industry. Another company that many people know about is Huawei. Although this company has been around much longer than GJI, it is only in recent years that it has become a powerhouse in consumer electronics. Huawei has some of the best phones on the market and they are leading the 5G industry. Love them or hate them? It is undeniable that Huawei is a major international player. Other brands like Xiaomi, founded in 2010, Oppo, founded in 2004, OnePlus, founded in 2013, have all risen to the top of the tech world in the last 10 years. These are just a few of the standout companies that I have noticed, but the Chinese tech industries have started to shine, from electric vehicles to solar farms, Chinese companies are dominating in many areas. I could make an entire video about this topic because it is truly impressive. But let's move on to number 9 on this list. Another area that has shown tremendous growth in the past decade is city planning. I'm mostly talking about architecture and construction. It seems if you visit a city more than once, it is almost like visiting a different city. The construction speed here is insane. We have all seen the time lapses of bridges or buildings being built in days, but it is crazy to actually live here and see it happen. Airports, train stations, subway lines and buildings can be built in years. When I first moved to Beijing, the China Zoon Tower couldn't be seen on the skyline. Now it can be seen from kilometers away. Another example is the Daxing Airport that took about 5 years to complete and is one of the largest airports in the world. The Soho China Development Company is one of the more innovative development companies around and they are responsible for constructing some of the most recognizable buildings in Beijing and Shanghai. They have worked with architects like Zaha Hadid and Kengo Kuma and won many awards for their buildings. From skyscrapers to hutongs, China's development can be seen in the skylines and back alleys all over the country. It is truly impressive how China is developing and it is also one of the most obvious signs of progress. Number 8 on the list is something I have personally noticed because I love to travel. When I first came to China, I traveled around the country from Shanghai to Beijing and coming to Xi'an. I visited many cities and tourist sites in my first year of living in China and I have continued to travel over the last 10 years. What I've noticed is China's domestic tourism industry has greatly developed. Many of the smaller tourist sites have been developed, which makes it easier to travel in China. A good example is Le Shan. I first visited the giant Buddha in 2011 and again in 2018. The first visit was disorganized, but in 2018 things had greatly improved. Transportation, tickets, lines and general facilities had been upgraded, making the second trip more enjoyable. We made it up to the top and um, the hike up to the top was the same as seven years ago. But once I got up here, it really was not the same at all. A lot more people and then here behind me, you have to line up zigzag. Uh, they built a temple that wasn't here before. So yeah, they're really building this place up and it's getting really popular. These types of improvements have happened all over the country because more and more people are traveling domestically. Another national push was related to food safety. When I first came to China, it seemed like food scandals happened every month. 
from gutter oil to pigs floating in the Huangpu River. It seemed nothing was safe to eat here. So, number 7 on this list is improved food safety. Nowadays, I rarely see stories about China's food industry. Maybe one or two stories a year will make the news and this is because of the government's push to improve food conditions. Unfortunately, many street food and night markets were shut down because most of the sellers didn't have licenses or permits to sell food. I have to say, I miss the street food, but I don't miss the food poisoning. Overall, I would say things have improved especially in major cities and now I'm usually confident when eating out or ordering food. Number 6 on the list rounds up my focus on national level development. I think one of the biggest developments that I've seen here in the past 10 years are focused on infrastructure and transportation systems. Most notably, China's high speed rail network. The HSR network reached 36,000 kilometers in total length in August 2020, with plans to reach 70,000 kilometers in 2035. In 2010, the HSR had a ridership around 290 million passengers, but by 2019, the HSR recorded over 2.2 billion riders. These numbers alone should demonstrate how China's high-speed rail network has developed in the past 10 years. The HSR is just one example of China's commitment to developing its infrastructure. I mentioned the Daxing International Airport earlier when talking about city planning, and airports are another good example of China's infrastructure development. If I'm not traveling by train, I usually fly, and I have to say, I have seen some pretty amazing airports in China. Another development which I use less but I still find very impressive is the highway system. According to the government, China now has over 130,000 kilometers of highways nationwide, according to an official census on the country's expressways. That's enough to go around the globe more than three times. It is hard to understand this, but everywhere I go in China, there seems to be a smooth highway. From trains, planes to automobiles, this country is developing fast. I have to say, in the past 10 years, things have improved greatly. We have made it to the top 5 on this list, and I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. I want to say thank you to all of the people who have already subscribed to my channel because of this series. I really appreciate it, and it means a lot. So, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? If you want me to continue making videos and talking about China, be sure to hit the like button to let me know you enjoy watching. Also, I love coffee, so if you want to buy a coffee to show your support, you can click the link below. Okay, let's move on to the top 5 on the list of things that have changed in China in the past 10 years. These 5 things will focus more on personal things that I experience and see in my day-to-day -day life and not so much on national level projects. Let's jump back in with number 5. When I first came to China, I never knew if my brands or products were real or knockoffs. Now, I don't worry about it as much. So, number 5 on the list is cracking down on fake products and knockoffs. I remember the first time when I was in Shanghai, walking along the Bund, and a man asked me if I wanted to buy a Rolex. I was really shocked, but of course, I bought one. And I remember how easy it was to buy fake products. Even when I moved to Beijing in 2013, I could find knockoff markets near the city center. My father visited me in 2013, and we went to the Pearl Market and Yasho Market. He was so shocked by all the knockoff products, and he couldn't stop talking about the $200 jacket he bought for $20. Knockoff products weren't the only things that you could buy at the black markets. I have stacks of DVDs when I used to buy movies and TV shows. Nowadays, it is much harder to find these markets and shops. You can still find them and it is still possible to find knockoffs, but you will no longer be approached on the streets. This hasn't really affected my life, but it is very noticeable and personally, I think it is a good thing that China is becoming stricter on copyright. Now, if I can just stop people from stealing my videos and posting them on Douyin, that would be great. The next thing on the list was a small change, but it made a big difference. Coming in at number 4 is banning smoking in public areas. 
In 2015, Beijing banned smoking in 28 public areas. And other cities have enacted their own laws to curb smoking in public areas. The smoking bans had a major impact on smokers and nowadays, especially in big cities, smoking is no longer an issue. When I first moved to China, it seemed everyone smoked everywhere. From hospitals, taxis and bars to airports, elevators, trains and restaurants. Everywhere I went, people, especially older men, smoked. I can remember that cigarettes were used like an unofficial currency. Sharing a cigarette was the fastest and easiest way to start a conversation or ask a favor. My husband Miguel would be offered cigarettes on a daily basis and always get strange stares when he refused to accept them. They would usually mumble something about la why and get a laugh from the group of smokers. Now, smoking is looked down on by many people and smokers are forced to smoke in designated areas. For a non-smoker, this was a great step forward and has made my life more enjoyable in China. Number three on my list is online shopping. 17 years ago, in 2003, a little company called Taobao launched here in China. Fast forward to today and it is now the largest e-commerce website in the world. It seems that in the last 10 years that I have been living in China, online shopping and home delivery have exploded. I can buy everything and anything online because Taobao hosts over 1 billion products. If you live outside of China, think of Taobao like Amazon, but better. In 2009, Alibaba, the parent company of Taobao, launched Singles Day or Double Eleven Day. In the past 11 years, this unofficial holiday grew from around 100 million US dollars in sales to over 75 billion US dollars in one day sales. Those numbers alone should demonstrate just how big online shopping has become in China. Another aspect of this phenomenon is home delivery. Apps like Ulama and Waimai allow users to order just about anything in the city to your front door within an hour. You can order groceries, food, flowers, and even medicine. Personally, I have a love-hate relationship with it because it makes me a little bit lazier and I'm also gaining some weight. All these deliveries have been made possible by Chinese apps that have become really popular in the recent years. Although there are many Chinese apps, I will talk about one. If you live in China, you know the one app that rules all is WeChat or Weixin. WeChat was launched in 2011 and in 2013 the app introduced mobile payment and the rest is history as they say. This app lets you do everything. I can pay my utilities, buy train tickets, flights and hotels, order food, play games, upload videos, hail a taxi or a Didi, chat with friends, pay at stores and restaurants, unlock bikes, pay my phone bill, ride the subway and show I'm healthy. In the last nine years, this app has conquered China. It is used in every setting and it is super convenient. I could have added this into the Chinese text section of this list, but I feel it really needs its own section because of the importance in everyday life. If you have been living in China for the past five years, you know what I'm talking about. We have made it to the number one on the list. You might have been able to guess it, but if you haven't, leave your best guess in the comment below. Also, please like this video because that really helps the video and my channel. After all, you've made it this far, so hit that like button and make me happy. Okay, number one is both a government push and something you use every day. I'm talking about air, and more specifically, air pollution. When I first came to China, air pollution was an everyday battle. I would have to wear a mask when I went outside and some days I couldn't even go to work because it was too polluted. Even five years ago, it was still a problem in Beijing. Luckily, in 2015, a very brave woman named Chai Jing released a documentary called Under the Dome, which exposed many reasons for why Beijing had terrible air pollution. This public shaming and concern from citizens led the government to make major changes. In the past, we would have 15 to 20 bad air days in Beijing per month. Now, in 2020, we might have 2 to 5 bad air days a month. 
Most days are really nice, like today, and I rarely have to wear my face mask because of air pollution. Although there is still air pollution here in China, I can honestly say that things have improved greatly and we can all breathe a little easier. So here you have it, 10 ways that China has improved in the past 10 years. There are really way too many changes to list them all, but these are some of the ones that I have noticed and that are most impressive. Thank you for watching this series. I hope you enjoyed watching the series as much as I enjoyed making them. If you haven't seen all 10 episodes, go back to the first one where I talk about why I like living in China. In the next videos, I will be sharing more about my life in China and I am considering making a new series. So make sure to subscribe to see what comes next. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye!